welcome to episode 27 of Carlene's Anime Corner, a St. John's County Public Library podcast. And I am going to admit that there is a lot of loud traffic outside today, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to remove all the noises. So if you hear some motorcycles, a couple trucks, I apologize in advance. So once again, I'm here with Miss Zoe to discuss another anime. How are you doing today, Zoe? I'm doing pretty good, relatively speaking. It is incredibly hot outside, so I am feeling a little little gross right now. But other than that, I'm doing just fine. Yeah, it probably didn't help you rode your bike here right before. No, it did not. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and we're also stuck in a small back room closet, which does not have a lot of airflow. <laughs> yeah, I don't see a <laughs> ventilation duct anywhere. <laughs> which might be good for air conditioning noises, but anyway, not so good for the coolness of the room. So have you watched any, other than what we're reviewing today, have you watched any other anime or done anything fun and nerdy? Fun and nerdy? I did get a b- bit of progress done in this writing project I've been working on for a while. It's uh, just like a little sci-fi piece I'm doing for my writing class that I'm actually pretty proud of, and I kind of got to nerd out a bit about it to my teacher. Oh, that's but fun. The, other than that, I mostly just kind of sat around, replayed some old Pokemon games. I just finished Legends Arceus in like... That was probably one of the first times I felt true fear in a Pokemon game in that final <laughs> battle. Like, I was terrified. Okay, I am not anywhere near that. I have to admit, I've kind of not been playing any video oh, games for a oh, while. Once you get to the Arceus fight, um, yeah, be prepared. It's like they took a copy of Bloodborne and just took inspiration from like the, <laughs> one of the final boss. It's terrifying. I sat down to watch a bunch of new anime for this season. Nothing really caught me really hard unfortunately i mean there's some things that look like fun but i I, nothing that i wanted to binge watch so i actually found myself a chinese drama on netflix that's 50 episodes long and i think i've watched it in two and a half weeks (laughs) (laughs) it's called the untamed if you want to check it out it was i um, (laughs) don't have much experience with like sea dramas and stuff like that so i don't know much about this one had a little bit of fantasy element to it um it was talking a lot about the cultivation and kind of like magic clans and stuff cultivation clans and um yeah it was it was kind of fun had a little bit of you know a dark edge because one of the guys winds up being able to control the dead with flutes Ooh. yeah yeah they didn't dive into that as deep as i would have wanted they kept but it still i i enjoyed it it was fun So this year, I saw that we were getting a season three of an anime I've actually been kind of interested in. So I thought we would review season one. And we watched The Legend of Galactic Heroes, the Noia Thesis, I think is how they pronounce it. Um, Pretty much it's a reboot of the old series. So the original series came out in 1988 and ran until 1997. It was 110 episodes. And um, it's actually based on a book series from 1982 that was 10 volumes long, and the series finished in 1987. Distinction, it wasn't a manga series, it was a novel series. Yeah, it was a full-on novel series. No pictures. That tells you that there's a lot of background material for this anime. Yeah, and it isn't always, in my opinion, not the greatest (laughs) <laughs> but, not the greatest. Okay. I kind of leaned a bit too hard to the book for that. Well, the first season came out in 2018. As I said, they're doing a third season this year. So there was a second season somewhere in there. I can't remember exactly when. So Legend of Galactic Heroes focuses mostly on two empires, the Alliance of Free Planets and the Galactic Empire. And they have been at war for 150 years. Yeesh. Yeah, long time, long space wars going on all over the place. And we have our two main characters, one of which is an admiral on the Alliance side, and that's Yang Wenli. Or they say it in the show, Yang Wenli. I think it's Yang Oh, it's Wen- Yang? I think it's Yang Wenli. Okay, sorry. I'm really horrible about remembering how to pronounce names. I think it's Yang Wenli, mostly because I watch like a couple, I watch a Chinese YouTuber who like goes over pronunciations and uh, stuff. I think it's Yang Wenli. Yang Wenli. Okay, so Yang Wenli is on the Alliance side. And then on the Galactic Galactic Empire, which is <laughs> sound, it's about as evil as it sounds, I think, is Reinhardt von Lohengren. <laughs> so um, as you can see already, two very different people, but two incredibly smart and really good techni- tacticians. And they wind up going up against each other. Pretty much the series is these two guys having battles 
with lots of politics and talking in between. Lots of politics and talking. So, Zoe, um, real quick, your thoughts on this, uh, non-spoiler thoughts on this series and your star rating. Okay, um, those were the longest 12 episodes of my life. Just, (laughs) oh my. Um, It was, it started off interesting. The space battles were pretty cool. And I liked, I initially liked how they introduced some of the characters and they were a bit hasty in, the, in their introduction. Like, okay. a bit hasty. They kind of threw names at you a bit there and it was hard to keep track. And then they killed them two seconds and later. And then they killed them two seconds <laughs> later. They just, they give you the name, the title, their like background and their history and then they just kill them off. And it's a little, I don't know, quick. And I like a couple things about it. Like uh the like the, the animation is competent, the space the spaceships look really nice. I love the spaceship designs. The intro is actually kind of a banger. It's I, I like that song. It's a slow song, but I like it. Are the lyrics in English? There's a part of it that is in English at the very end. Okay, because I couldn't tell. Cause yeah. It was like heavily accented a little bit. Yeah. There there was a little bit of English mixed in, but it was mostly in Japanese. And unfortunately, I watched this on Crunchyroll because I lent you my discs. And unfortunately, Crunchyroll for some reason does not subtitle the song lyrics. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't make much sense anyway, to be honest. Okay, because <laughs> I, I was like, I like knowing what the songs are about at the beginning of anime because sometimes they actually are saying something about the series. But overall, my thoughts on this series is. This is the first time I've actually had to give a show a 2.8 rating because (laughs) there are some things I like about it, but they either didn't explore them enough, they weren't really one of a main focus, or they just kind of completely ignored them in favor of other things that I did not like or care for. Okay, so my thoughts on this show are a little bit different. Might be the age gap. I don't know. Could Probably be, is. could be. Um, I will say that both you and I binge this show in like one day. <laughs> Talk about putting off your homework. <laughs> I was too busy with that uh, Chinese drama I was watching. I don't think this is a good show to do that with. I think we hurt ourselves by doing that and the show. I I did have to watch the first season of Castlevania just, get, just to get my neurons firing again. So like, <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to watch this in one sitting. It's really... <laughs> no. I would give this a slightly higher one rating because I was actually very interested in a lot of what they were saying because it was making me think a little bit. But if you want an anime that's pure rah rah re, let's go out and have fun, craziness and so on, this is not that anime. It is it is not. So I have to admit, I think I keep going back and forth, but I think I gave it a. I think in my head I've settled on a three point five. Because I am going to watch the second season, and I am definitely very interested to see where it's going to go and how the main characters develop. Because I like the, the, the diverging paths that the main characters are taking, and some of the side characters I'm kind of curious about. I kind of couldn't care less about most of these people, except for like two or three of them. And even <laughs> then, they didn't, get, they didn't get nearly enough screen time. And I, I do like talky-thinky shows. It's just, I feel like this one leaned a little bit too much into the talky part. And okay. I am a little bit more accustomed to talking, but there's also action happening in the background. And they're not just, like, throwing, like, a textbook worth of information at you. Okay. Because the thing is, I, when I first started watching this show, beforehand, like, literally 30 minutes before I put the disc in to my DVD player, I was doing history homework. And I saw, it was literally like reading out of a textbook half the time. Yeah. Well, and I think, again, I think that's part of the damage of taking a 10-volume book series and trying to condense it into an anime series. Yeah, because you can either, like, fully adapt all the dialogue or try to condense it, and sometimes neither of those work out. I am going to, um, I did, okay. Real quick before we get into the spoiler things, I did find an interesting quote about comparing this series to the original 1980s one. Christopher Ferris of the Anime News Network, he wrote that the 1988 to 97 series, so the original Legend of Galactic Heroes, focused on the big picture of war, while the 2018 series only focuses only on the major plays by our two main characters to fit within its shorter, more focused format. So I wonder if maybe if we had watched the original series, which had a bigger focus, it would have had more action because we would have seen a lot more stuff going on yeah, instead we of would just have... following two characters and they have a lot of downtime. Yeah, I think they gave it a bit too much downtime, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm just, 
There are a couple of things I want to say about it, but it's a bit spoilery. Okay. Well, then let's go ahead and dive into the spoilers. So let's start. I'm going to start by laying out kind of the differences between the two organizations, the Galactic Empire and the Alliance of Free Planets. So the Galactic Empire was founded by a guy named Rudolph. Who does not seem to be very nice at all. No, uh, I'm going to say that probably, well, I will not say the Galactic Empire is Nazis because they're actually, I think, more based upon World War I era Germany. I would say that Rudolph is probably the closest to a Hitler anagram Like, we have. I think um, one dude who's got, like, artificial eyes, I don't yeah. remember his name, he mentions that if he lived during Rudolph's time, he would have been called an would have been killed under the Inferior Genes Act. Which yeah, because like, he was um, born because <laughs> he was born with a disease in his eyes. Yeah, so. so he had to get robot ones. But like, yeah, that I saw that line and I'm like, oh, so that's what it's like. Yeah, but that again was hundreds of over what this war has been going on for 150 years, and probably I can't like, so probably like two, three hundred years ago is when the original emperor lived. That obviously is no longer in place. As I said, I, I saw a lot of. A lot of things in common with like World War One era Germany versus World War Two is more that than that. The, the helmets, other way. for one thing, they had well, the spike. Yeah, yeah, they got the spike. Like my mom took one look at during one of the fight scenes. Like, oh yeah, they're German, aren't they? Like, oh yeah, they're very German. I mean, look at these names. We got Siegfried and we got Reinhardt. I and mean, we got a guy named Fahrenheit. <laughs> you might as well have called him Stroheim von Frankfurt or something. Yeah. They're also very, very, um, the Galactic Empire is also very classist because if you have a Vaughn in your name, you are of the noble class. Now, some nobles are rich, some are poor, but there's still a difference between a noble and a commoner because we saw that with Reinhardt and Kirchis, his... Uh, Kirti Heiss, how they say it in the show. Kirti Heiss. That's it, how they say it in the show, but it's also like Japanese accented German, so yeah. I'm not sure if it's accurate. Well, that's like the Neue Tesis. I'm not sure how Tesis is actually pronounced in German, but that's how they pronounced it for the show in Japanese. Then they have, he's not that rich because he's living right next door to a commoner, but there's still like this gap between like the Kirsius was still like, oh my gosh, you have a Vaughn in your name. You're a noble. And, and there's the guy's like, oh, your first name's Siegfried? That's a, so commoner's, a commoner's name. name. That's a commoner's yeah. name. So, I mean, it's a very classist society. And also the whole thing about how uh, Reinhardt's sister gets like literally just taken from by the Kaiser because oh they called leader the Kaiser by the way yeah you can't tell yes. if they're the German em- or not the emperor is there is is called Kaiser which is actually the Germanic form of Caesar which comes from the Holy Roman Empire yeah <laughs> so there's a lot of history there's a lot of a history. lot of history stuff that I don't really remember yeah I didn't really catch up on so that that can be good and that can be bad. To have all that history in there because it gives a lot of weight to it, but it also, as you said, can make it a little dense, boring, a little, a little dry, a little dry, a little lengthy. These people have like three extra pairs of lungs because they're just talking so much. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep bringing this up. They will not stop talking, all and right. it's like every single scene is like two, or three paragraphs worth of dialogue from like every character, and it's just. Mm. A lot of talking. A lot of talking. See, I don't mind a lot of talking in shows. A lot. My one of my favorite shows has a lot of talking, but they inter they they put the talking like in the middle of an action scene. But like they, they're they're talking while well, they're doing the thing. So I think and the thing they're talking about I isn't did, just a history lesson. I did a review a while ago with uh, Mr. Keith about Godzilla Singular Point, and we were talking about the same thing. Like they're having these very esoteric science discussions, and. But the thing is, is that you get five minutes of that, but then you get a giant monster fight. Yeah, they to, like, actually reward like, you. <laughs> they give you a break. And the thing about it is sometimes when they're talking in this show, they they lean into a lot of politics and strategy. And done well, the talking can be very, you know, yeah. you need it to know what's going on. I will say when they're doing their strategy talks, I appreciate the fact they had the holograms of like the ship formations and stuff because that helped you figure out a little bit more about what they were talking about. Yeah, they kind of don't really give you that much context. You kind of kind of got to got to like yeah. look at what's going on. Which that was the one thing I will say is I was probably inferring a lot of stuff into the show that they weren't exactly saying just by the way the characters were interacting. So it's something that maybe maybe I got more out of it because I was looking for more, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was just taking it at face value. I don't really yeah. look too much into things. Well, like, see, the thing about, like, the whole politics discussion thing, the way they talk about it, those politics and, like, those strategies and, like, all this, like, 
stuff going on. It has the capacity to be interesting and really in, and really mm-hmm. like engaging. Like I wanted to know what was going on, all these certain things. But then they just like keep dragging it on, and you're like, well, okay, okay, are we gonna talk more about this? And like, no, let's talk about logistics. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Well, and, the, and I think that's because, as I said, as uh, one uh, reviewer from Anime News Network said, they're focusing only on two characters. He's not involved in a lot of the other politics going around. His thing is the logistics and the tactics. So you're getting just enough of the outside politics to give you an idea of what's going on and what's the driving force for him. But not enough to actually make it as interesting as it could be. Yeah, like or not, as enough intriguing. To, not enough. You're to really not care getting. About it. You're not getting the whole backstory and why these people are the way they are, and why you have the anti-war. Like in the Alliance of Free Planets, you have the anti-war faction, and you have the faction that's like, oh yeah, we should go and attack. Yeah, the nationalist people. I don't remember what they're called. Like the White yeah. Knights or something like that. A patriotic Knights. Patriotic Knights. Yeah. See the scene where they go to like a. Uh, Young Wenli's house because he didn't stand up during the uh, the pledge, the memorial service. Yeah, during, he didn't stand up when they did the pledge yeah. playing. They well, went to his house and they like threw, they broke some stuff. The thing is, is the reason why uh, Young Wenli was so upset is because the reason why they were having a memorial service was because what did they say? One point five million yeah, people 1. died. Five million, million people. soldiers died. And the thing is, is Young Wenli knew they didn't have that many people would not have died if the admirals of that fight had been competent, because he was there. Yeah, he, he was like the one who actually saved a couple yeah. people and kept and them alive. And Yang Wenli understands that, yes, my country's at war, and he got pulled into it, but at heart, he's a scholar. He's a historian. He's not a soldier. And so he's looking at this from that perspective, and he's like, this war is stupid, and I am not going to stand up and cheer for the fact that we are going to send more people to die for no good reason. See, Young Wen Lee is one of the things I like about this show. Yeah, I like because him. Because he's, he's very got, interesting. Yeah, he actually gets enough screen time to where you can care about him. Oh, I love the fact that after the Patriotic Knights go and trash his house, um, you get his ward, a war orphan that lives with him that he's taking care uh, of. I think his name is like Julian. Julian, yeah, although... Supposedly, Wen Lee is taking care of Julian, but I think Julian is actually taking care of Wen Lee. <laughs> just gonna say that kid is more organized than any person I have ever met in my life. Yeah, Young Wen Lee is just kind of chilling. He doesn't yeah. really do a lot like for himself. He, well, he lived in that house for months and never unpacked anything. It wasn't until the kid moved in, the kid was like, "We're unpacking all this stuff." It's like, all right, do what you want. Yeah, it, it's Julian is cleaning up the mess, and he tells Young Wen Lee to just literally go sit on the table and be out of the way. <laughs> I, see, and, and that's I, why I remember his name because I actually like him. Yeah, and I love the fact that one of his friends from the military calls him up to warn him that you know bad things might happen because of what he did, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it, it already did." And he's like, "So why are you sitting on the table?" And he's like, "Eh, why not?" <laughs> and I just I love that kind of like, eh. and half the time when you see him later on during the battles, he's. Sitting on like the counter and stuff. Yeah, he's not standing. He's just like sitting on like the control panel. On like yeah, the, on like he's sitting in a chair. Well, a and he's sitting. Way. He's sitting cross-legged too. It's not even like he's got his feet dangling. He it's just like an L kind of situation. Yeah, where he just doesn't want to sit properly. Yeah, I, he, I, and he's, just, he's got like his thumb in his mouth, or he's just like chewing on something, or he's messing with his hat, or he's just like mm-hmm. stretching. Just like not taking it seriously, really. But you can tell there's wheels turning in his head. Yeah, he's thinking, but on the outside, you'd think he was like falling asleep at his chair or something. But I think in some way, that's an act he does because he knows if he shows emotion, that if he shows that things are going badly and not that he's not being calm about it, that will infect the people around him and might. And if he's calm, they'll be calm and they'll do their jobs better. So I think that might be something he has developed too. One over thing time. I want to bring up uh, when he get during the whole uh, not the Death Star infiltration mission because they <laughs> they have the the, uh, the the Galactic Empire they <laughs> share more than a few similarities with the Empire of Star Wars. Not gonna lie, <laughs> yeah. Which I would say this came out at a time when the author probably was influenced by that. Yeah, because they do have a giant uh, mechanical space station that fires massive lasers. Yep, and, and it's round. And it's round, and um, they have to infiltrate it through, like, a very secret thing. It, it's just massive Star Wars, Star Wars vibes. But yeah. That was one of the most engaging arcs in my opinion. I will say, that was really good, because he came up with this plan to have um, escaped members of the Galactic Empire pretend to be um, spies like, that got gnomes got caught and go in and pretty much secretly take out the whole fort without anybody dying 
Yeah, that's actually an interesting plan. And I like how when he went to recruit the, like, rebelled uh, em- Imperials. Uh, what mm-hmm. was his name? Uh, uh, the guy whose name meant Pretty Head. What was Shurnkov. it? Shurnkov. Von I Shurnkov. Like, I, I like... Anyway, double... Shurn- Shurnkov is Let's call him name. Shurnkov. I like his character because, like... When you hear him talking, he does talk with an accent compared to everybody mm-hmm. else, which yeah. shows how he, he was raised with a different well, language. Well, and he was the only one out of the group that actually was born in the Empire because the other ones were descendants of people who had escaped because he lived in the because he was asking his two people before they went onto the ship, you know, have you ever lived in the Empire? And one of them was like, no, uh, my dad escaped and I was born in the Alliance. And the other one was the same type thing. Yeah, he, he, li- li- he lived with his grandfather. Until he was six. So, so, like, one thing I like, because when they're, like, recruiting him, they're like, so we're going to need you to, like, uh, go in here and pretend to do all this stuff. And he's like, well, what if I rebel? Because there was, like, a whole stigma against him because he was the 13th dude and everybody before him, like, turned back to the Empire. Yeah, well, he was the seventh one. It seventh was, one, not 13th. Yeah. Different bad number. And and they thought that he would, and every single leader of these knights who were um, from descendants of people who had run away from the Empire had at that point gone back to the empire and so they all were kind of expecting him to do it so like i like how when yang wen lee was like well if you do end up turning on me fun yeah <laughs> there's like, nothing i can do he's like it, yeah it's... there's nothing i can do i'm kind of putting a lot of trust in you so i really like it if you kind of complied yeah he was just like i like how nonchalant about it he was like yeah we're yeah if, if you turn on us we're all dead yeah <laughs> yeah there's nothing i can do about it and i appreciate the fact that the guy looked at him and says if you trust me i'll trust you and it was just the fact that they just mutually decided, okay, we'll trust each other. And that's what they did. That's what they did. Now, I will say one way in which this show displays the age of its source material is kind of the shock when his when he became Admiral the girl. Oh, yeah, her. Uh, Greenleaf is her last name. Greenhill. Green Greenhill. Hill. What's her first name? I don't remember. I don't either. I just know her last name is Greenhill. I keep wanting to call and her Jenny, ha- but that was the other girl. Ah, she's like anyway. So she, everybody is kind of surprised that she's a girl, and I think that's a result because of the er- fact that this originally came out in the eighties, when it was not that common to have women in the military, particularly in positions of authority like that on a uh, front line. She didn't really do that much, though. That was like outstanding, aside from giving him a drink that one time, and he told her he didn't like it because he preferred tea over. Well, coffee. that's when she was a teenager. Yeah, I know, but, but like, that's like the most distinct well, thing I remember about her. She also, I think, she also was doing more behind the scenes stuff. And I think she's going to become a bigger character as the series goes on. I hope so cause, because like, she was interesting, and then she kind of got she pushed to the side a little bit. Yeah, but as I said, because you notice several times people make comments like wait, you're a girl and you're pretty and you're in the military? So I think that's a, probably a sign of the times of the original source material. He's like, I, I like him, okay? Yeah. He just, he's funny. He's he is. Funny. He, he's he's definitely got a very interesting laid-back sense of humor, too. Though I think he that's part of why he and Wan Lee get along so well together. The whole, and his role in the Death Star infiltration, oh, sorry, not Death Star, trademark squared. Is so, uh, is home? Is whole is whole I think is whole yeah, like, was is the name something. of the fortress. It's purple, it's purple. And yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say the way they managed to like lead the two generals in there into like different areas, separate them, and then just annihilate one general with the with the base's own laser was kind of cool. That was actually yeah, really cool. yeah. And then the the fake eyes dude. He was watch. He was in the general. He was in the fleet that was about to get annihilated. And he was like, and "Okay." He I'm saw what leave. was coming, and he just left. He just dipped. Yeah, he was like, "Nothing's wrong with running." Yeah, and I and I he ran knowing there was a good chance to be put to death for it too. And I think people were like trying to get him to like later on. They're trying mm-hmm. to like condemn him for it. Yeah, and um, he went to Lohengrim and was like, told him, "I can help you with your plans." And Lohengrim originally didn't want him. Because he's a slightly shady. He's a little suspicious. Not he's a little lie. suspicious. A little suspicious. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like the what he said to Lohengrim, though, is like, you are going to be out in the open and you're going to be showing, you know, the shining light. I will be the shadow who will do things that you can't do. And I was like, okay, I can see how he could say that. And he's a shady character. He's going to be the guy, the like spy master in the background, I think, type character. On the topic of Lohengrim. I only remembered his first name when I first got in this booth. Uh, Reinhardt? Reinhardt, because he shares a name with a character from Attack on Titan, Reinhardt. Oh, <laughs> with okay. With a T instead of a D. And I don't... 
I feel like I should care more about him, but like somehow he just wasn't as engaging as a uh, young Wenli. He wasn't as engaging. I feel like they're trying to give us more sympathy with him because of the situation with his sister being pretty much kidnapped by the Kaiser. Yeah, but like, but didn't really show I, much of him. I find it hard to like him. He's much colder than Wenli. Yeah, he's kind. He's um. He's more willing to kill a lot of people, especially yeah. in the last half. Yeah, no, he he is definitely a lot colder. He's more willing to do whatever it takes that he needs to do. Is complete opposite of Wenli because Wenli tries to take as make sure as few people as possible die, and he's like, I don't care how many people die. We're just going. If I need to kill them, they will die. I like how uh, when they showed like the, the childhood flashback with Lo and Grum. Uh, when, the minute he found out his like sister got taken by the Kaiser, one of his first thoughts was, "I'm gonna take over the empire now." Yeah, I'm gonna become Kaiser myself. I'm doing it. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm being the ruler. Well, and that's it. And that's how he thinks is like more power. And like he's a uh, he's maximum casualty, and then uh, Wet Yang Wen Lee is like minimum casualty. Yeah. Well, and he's maximum casualty, but only if it gets him what he needs and doesn't hamper him. Because I have a feeling he would be just as careful with his own troops if he needed them. But if he sees that if I throw away the lives of this amount of people and it gets me what more, then I will do that. He's definitely the type to throw in a bunch of new recruits to use as bait. Yeah. If it, may, if it yeah. means he got a strategic advantage. And yeah. Young Wen Lee's like, how are we going to spread this out so nobody dies? I don't want anyone to die. Here. Or as few people as possible. And even as few as the enemy as possible. Because if you think about it, when he took the fortress, he just he not, he not took 500,000 prisoners. And he told the fleet that was about to turn back and attack, if they wanted to surrender and flee, they could. Their leader was, was kind, kind of, of uh, stupid. <laughs> they just kind of, he just kind of like, you know what, eh, fire away. Yeah. Well, and even then, he fired on the flank, which only took out a few of the ships. It wasn't even, like, yeah, down he didn't the middle. Go, he, didn't he didn't go, go for the, the most. Heart. And just to show, look, this is what we can do to you. And then the admiral was like, no, I'm going to die with the honor of a soldier. And that made Wenli I have really the, angry. I have the true heart of a warrior. I'm going to yeah. die with honor. And he's like, oh. Yeah, and that actually made Wenli angry. Yeah, Wenli's like, dude, what are you doing, man? Yeah. And so he was like, fire directly on the flagship. Just take him out. And he did, and then everybody else was like, bye, we're running now. <laughs> just <laughs> cut off the head and the body will follow. Yeah, yeah. It, as I said, there, there's a lot of things about the series I liked. But I agree with you. It is not, it is not the most engaging. Like, uh, one thing I, I feel like I mentioned before, but the fact that they throw so many characters with names at you right out of the bat. Like, the fact that they're, like, subtitles, like, they have, like, a caption so, that gives you a name. You have to read it before the scene ends. The reason why I very often have no memory of the name of most characters in an anime I'll watch. I'm horrible about names I'm, in any anime I'll watch. It's, I visually recognize that person. I know I can tell you everything about their backstory and all this stuff. I have no idea what their name is. <laughs> This series is very much like that. It's like I picked out visual cues on certain characters. Uh, I know the names of like three or four characters and that is it. Because and I just got I was like it flashed up. I was like, oh, OK, that's nice. He's an admiral. So he's semi important. OK, moving on. But I don't really remember a whole bunch of names. Like, yeah. At the pace of how many characters they were introducing well, at once. And there, there was really... one time that they were introducing all the admirals for this giant fleet of 50 million people or something ridiculous like that. And there's like eight names they flash up there. And I'm like, OK, all I need to know is you're important. And you have shown up before, so I probably should remember you. The rest of you, I'm just going to ignore unless you do something interesting. Yeah, I just, it just feels like, cause like you're rushing to read all these names I put up on yeah. the screen. And it just like kind of takes a while because they're introducing everyone by their rank and by their name. By the time I reached the final episode, I was so sick of hearing them say Vice Admiral and Rear Admiral because there were so many Vice Admirals that yeah, I just couldn't I, keep I track feel... of any of them. It's hard to grasp the actual size of this army because they say like, oh, we're going to send 50 million troops or something like that. And I'm just like... That's insane. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. I mean, I've read a lot of sci-fi. I've even read an entire series by David Weber, which is nothing but a space opera. That is pretty much the first few books, the redoing of the Napoleonic Wars in space, which was really <laughs> cool. It was really cool, really well done. It was different enough, but it was like one of the planets was French-based and the other one was very British-based, and you could tell that's where he was taking his inspirations. That might be why I like the series, because I also love that 
book series. So, <laughs> but I, I felt that I lost my track of thought. Oh well, but I felt that this one they they didn't do a very good job of showing just how many people were involved. Like when you're sh- when they're showing the size of like the fleets and stuff like that, they only they don't really show like the entire fleet. They just show no, like, they a show bunch you of, a chunk of it. They show you but, a chunk of it, but not the entire thing. Yeah, and it's just it's kind of hard to grasp the size of what's going on. Which I get maybe that's why the invasion of the fortress was better because you were following a much smaller size. Yeah, it was a lot less large scale just like two massive sides shooting at each other for like five minutes and mm-hmm. not much is happening and they're just talking a lot about it. Yeah. And meanwhile, in the infiltration arc, they had this small party and they're going through like tents, like checkups and they're getting patted down for weapons and they're playing the part and they're trying to keep their composure and they're fighting off generals and they yeah. get found out and they're like, we're going to gas the Which, place if you don't be our prisoner. Part kind of, of what I'm hoping is that as the series goes on, we get to see more of that kind of maneuvering, more of the the maneuvering within the people and not just large scale we can't grasp it space like battles. when they throw in that like uh, the free planets alliance the council thing where they're voting on key that on, was like, actually really the, interesting yeah it was but it just came out of nowhere and i was like oh wait yeah. what's going on now yeah well and i think they were using that as setup to sh- for the next part of when lee's st- story yeah because most of these people we have no idea why the one lady on the council is so gung-ho about war she's yeah. the director of transportation why does she care about why? this? Why? If they told us, or they gave us like a little bit, maybe a well, mini flashback or like is, a foreshadowing the, um, thing. The human resources person has literally said, we cannot continue this war because we need people for our to run regular things on our planet because we don't have the trained people for our factories. We don't have trained people for this. We don't have trained people for that. And she's like, yeah, that doesn't matter. We're just going to, we're not decreasing the let's military. Let's send in everyone at once. once. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do that. So, as if that's not a monumentally stupid move. Yeah, and and I'm just like, okay, you guys are destroying. Now, what did you think about the third player that showed up? That other planet that um, oh, Fezin, Fezin that has dealings with both the Alliance and the Galactic Empire. Okay, Fezin. He, Fezin is. I think there's going to be some very interesting stuff coming out of Fezin. Yeah, I think Fezin is. They're gonna try and keep. I think they explicitly said they're going to try and keep this war going, going. as long as possible yeah. because they can, they can get trade with both well, sides. But the other thing is he is buying up all their bonds. He's buying all their debt. So this is what he mentioned. So the longer the war goes on, the more bonds they will put out and the more that he can buy. So he owns like 80% of the debt of the alliance at this point, the leader of Fezzin. So when this war, when he wants to, he can call that debt in and they're not going to be able to pay. Yeah, that's, he, a little, he that's is, a little disturbing. Yeah, he is working on financially owning both the Galactic Empire and the Alliance of Planets. He's a neutral party, but not in the way Switzerland is. It's um, Yeah, he's more aggressive than Switzerland was. Yeah. But yeah, so I, that's another interesting thing that I was like, okay, I think I kind of want to watch the second season because I want to see more. Because Pheasant, we only saw them for like maybe 10 minutes total. Yeah, I will admit For, I was getting interested in them, but by that time they came into the equation, mm-hmm. I was already so burnt out from all the talking <laughs> and the not happening and like the random characters that just get thrown in there. Like the dude who was like really pushing for the uh, the fifty million soldier assault. Oh, the was, Commodore who the was... Commodore guy who was a jerk to everybody, and then like when he was told his plan sucked. He just kind of had, he had a seizure for some reason. Yeah, he literally had a mental breakdown and just froze and seized completely. And just fell down. Yeah, that, I don't really understand him. Yeah, I, why I to... was he there? <laughs> well, I know he, okay, no, not why was he there, but like, why did you put him here now, of all places? Like, why didn't he show up earlier I w- to like lead into the whole thing? I wonder if having characters like that was just to show how political the army had gotten, the mil- or the navy, sorry, the navy had gotten, and that things were, um, this war has become so entrenched in the politics of this empire's life. I don't think the alliance knows how not to have war. Quite honestly, they have gotten everything so tied up in this war. I don't think they know how to have peace. And they've been showing that more and more through things like with the whole war orphan thing. There's all these war, like Julian is a war orphan. His parents died because they were soldiers. And like there's like a whole program. And there's where, a whole program yeah. where if you take in one of these kids, 
You get a stipend, you get a loan from the government to raise these kids. And if the kid decides to go and become a soldier, your loan is forgiven. That's like the worst way of encouraging more soldiers. It's like the worst way to enlist people. It's like it's like they're not even expecting the war to end. The war to end. No, it it, it isn't. And I'm and I find that kind of a fascinating thing because I find it interesting that in the 150 years of this war, we're just now starting to see an anti-war movement. Like this is so this, I'm like this war it has must been have going on happened. for 150 years. Yeah. So and I can just like there must have been an anti-war movement before this. So what happened to it? Which makes me really worried for Jennifer. The lady who was the girl, fiance of Wang Li's best friend, who died in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and she is now like a member of government. Someplace. She's a politician. She's, she's a politician. Just, she just got elected, running on an anti-war platform, and I'm like, this is not going to end well for her. I think because, like, if if what is being implied, if I'm understanding this correctly, there were anti-war movements, but they were kind of eliminated yeah because there's also i mentioned before the nationalist party who like kind of tries to assassinate anyone who shows any inkling of not liking the war and the thing is is that they're like oh it's just you know free members of the public and they're doing this on their own cognizance but when the patriotic knights attacked Wen Li's house one of them lost her helmet when he attacked them back with the sprinkler system <laughs> Which I know. <laughs> he just turned on that, spring- spring- that sprinkler system is a little too powerful if it can knock people over. Just gonna say that right <laughs> he just, now. Just like basically just hose them down. <laughs> yeah, he did he, with a pretty sprinkler much. system. He, he treated them like he would, you know, a dog that was fighting or something. Okay, yeah, I I, I love Young Winley. Okay, yeah, just he wish is, he got a bit more. Yeah, um, but you see his helmet get knocked off. He's the soldier who is yelling at him at the memorial service. So the, the soldiers themselves are the patriotic knights, and they had like. Military grade yeah. weapons and riot shields yeah. and gear, and they, they threw a, they threw like a smoke bomb and a flash grenade inside the house, and, and they were going they were willing to kill the guy who had saved a whole ton of their lives in that fight by taking over command and getting them out of there because they thought he wasn't patriotic enough yeah, because he wasn't gung ho about war. This is also the same dude who saved like almost an entire like station slash planet full of people mm-hmm. after like the El Facil place uh, or in Spanish the easy <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get over that name why they call it that but uh-huh. um but when yeah. they were there the whole situation was that one of the garrison captains I don't remember what his name was but it's not he tried important. to like flee like beforehand and take all of his soldiers with them and leave them behind but he's managed to stay there and get everybody off planet before well, the, and the worst thing the is, people invaded. Is I think what's fascinating about Wang Li is he is very clear on the type of people he's working with because he knew that garrison commander was going to flee and leave all the civilians behind to die. He used the fact that he was going to be escaping as a diversion so he could get the civilians off the planet. Yeah, for a bit of context. Because he knew the enemy was going to attack that garrison commander. Yeah, for, the con- for a bit of context, uh, the Galactic Empire was about to attack this, like, planet, like, mm-hmm. base or civilian area called El Facil. Yeah. And um, the garrison who was supposed to protect that area, they he just turned tail and ran and tried to abandon everybody behind him. Which caused the Galactic Empire to chase him down because these are soldiers and ships and we don't want them getting away, which left an opening for... Want Lee to get everybody, all the civilians off the planet and save yeah. everybody. So he's he was so, called the hero of El Facil. Because he knew the garrison commander was going to be a coward he and run. He was and he and u- run. used that cowardice in his tacti- tactical plans. Which is what, what I love about him is he uses the characters of the people around him for his tactical plans. Like he doesn't just look at the numbers. He looks at the character and the psychology of it. What I find fascinating is apparently he can't win at chess. <laughs> yeah. He's every, horrible at chess. Every chess game we see him play, he's losing. Yeah, badly. Badly. Which is fascinating because most anime you watch, we have like the tactical genius. Let, let's take Death Note um, with L. Chess, they're usually really good at chess. They're like three steps ahead. They're winning at everything. Like in Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth, one of his main like superpowers in that little spinoff series was that he used logic chess. Because yeah. he was really smart and he used chess to give people logic and like make their testimonies seem horrible because, you know, he is he is chess because he's smart. Yeah. But in this case, Wang Li is horrible at chess. 
but is good at tactics on the field. And, and that's I, not really something you see every day. Yeah, no. So I thought that was kind of fascinating little character thing they had with see, him. See, this show has a lot of things about it that are good, but there's always, they're just choked out by the things that are bad. It's a lot of little details that you have to pay attention to Like, find. you don't really, you don't really grow to like this show until, like, maybe a day after you watched it. Yeah. Because then you have I would to, say like, that. think about it and you remember some things and you're like, oh, this is actually now, pretty cool. that is the advantage of this show, though. You were thinking about the day after. How many episodes of Naruto are you going to think about the day after? I haven't seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't either. I have to admit. But like, I can say that when I when I do a a, re- a rewatch of JoJo, I do think about those episodes a lot. But that's just because yeah. I'm obsessed with the show. So I don't yeah, really know. but I mean, like, watch something that's a little bit lighter and fluffier. You're just watching it to watch it. I mean, it's not. You don't think too much about it afterwards. But if yeah. there's a lot going on in like the background instead of just face value, like you really think about these characters and their implications and what just happened and that kind of thing. You're like, oh, so that's what's going on. Yeah. So anyway, th- this is why I gave it a 3.5 is because there's a lot happening in the background. There's a lot I probably inferred, which I kind of want to confirm by watching the second season. And but I do agree there is a lot of talking and it is not the most exciting series at all times. It's like a lot of times it was and like yes, watching I do ignore half the names because there's a way too many of There's them. way too many people that they just throw at you. Again, 10 volume book series <laughs> <laughs> one thing and the original series was 110 episodes oh and we my... only watched 12 of the reboot Those were... that was the longest 12 episodes i have ever sat through <laughs> i said this before and i'll say it again so long and they weren't even that they're like 30 minutes each so like it wasn't too crazy i don't think yeah there was like 25 minutes yeah, and one other thing, one more thing that I I gave it a two point eight because those point eight came from the fact that the spaceships look really cool. They I de- love they, the they're design. very CGI'd. I will say though, because you could tell the CGI, which that kind of. But I do like the overall design. I kind of laughed hysterically because red haired dude Kirkis, his um his spaceship is red, and it's the <laughs> only red one in the entire thing. And I was like, so you had to give him a spaceship that matched his hair. <laughs> I like how a lot of the spaceships, they look kind of like guns. Yeah. Like, they're built with, like, a handle thing on the bottom, and, like, there's, like, Very barrels on the front. Very long and skinny, and... They have... They, they look like pistols. Mm-hmm. And, like, the, the flagships look more like daggers, I guess. They're, like, they're yeah. a lot sleeker, and they have, like, more of a window going on. They're like, yeah, all the battleships look like guns, and then the sleeker flagships look more like knives or daggers or something like that. I thought, yeah. I thought that was really cool. No, it is. It's a very interesting design, and I do like it. Um, as I said, I can't fault the animation on this series. I yeah, thought it was it well done. It looks beautiful in it's some where, shots. Yeah, production IG always... It, at least, I will say, most production IG stuff I've seen, they've done a really good job with the animation. Yeah, I was going to say, is there anything else, because it's about time for us to wrap up, was there anything else you wanted to say about this that we haven't covered yet? I really liked that shot in the intro where they have the bird in the cloud line and then they have like the ships just appear, like just piercing out of the clouds. The intro of this is was... slow, but really good. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's. I love the introduction intro, intro song opening to this. The song I thought was a bit cheesy. Yeah, most but anime the, songs are. But the are. animation is so nice and I like the like the clashing shots between both mm-hmm. sides. Yeah, they definitely do that focus of we're focusing on these two main characters. These are the galactic heroes we're looking at. I also really like it whenever you show, uh, whenever they show Young Wen Lee and uh, Lo and Graham together. And it's like Young Wen Lee is just like giving like a dopey smile. He looks kind of tired. And then Lo and Graham is just like He's he's glaring right through yeah, you. Yeah, glaring ice blue eye daggers right at. Blonde hair, blue eye, blondie hair. He is not having a good day. He is probably going to murder you at some point. Yeah. And then and then uh, Young Wen Lee's out here like, hey, do you want to like go get some fast food or something? Or <laughs> I got tea, Netflix. Tea. Tea. He's going to have tea, not he's coffee. He's going to have tea, not coffee. He doesn't like coffee. That's very clear. Which is another thing. I've never run into a naval show where coffee was not the main beverage. <laughs> Well, you can put caffeine in tea. You can put caffeine in tea. So. Well, I know. I have tea at home that actually has more caffeine than coffee does. <laughs> but they don't tend to... Um, tea gets worse as it sits. Coffee technically does too. But for some people reason, people tend to like coffee that's been sitting for a while and is like tar. I don't understand I it. I mean, it, but it might... Yeah. Like the, yeah, like the Maybe coffee stuff. tastes better reheated than tea does. Maybe. It's, it's weird. It's I don't weird. know. To sum it up, I will say for a series that you were not entirely enthused about, 
we actually came up with a lot to talk about. It, it was mostly because we got we talked about <laughs> the things that I paid attention to because they were like it was like a raft in an o- in an ocean of salt water. <laughs> the the characters those two three characters were the only things I actually like able to was able to pay attention to. Everything else I just kind of went one through one ear and out the other. <laughs> All right, Zoe, you finished watching Legend of Galactic Heroes, and we're not going to get together for about another month or so. Are, are you planning on working your way through any more of your to-watch list? Or do I, you have anything else lined up to that you're looking forward to? I am thinking of trying out some of my stuff on my to-watch list, like uh, Summer Wars. I know I have a physical copy of that that you got me once. I'm going to try and watch that. I <laughs> swear I'm going to return Megalobox to you at some point. <laughs> I borrowed it like three, four months ago, maybe even longer than that. I swear I'm going to get around to watching it at some point. But like right yeah. now, not right now, because I'm in the middle of like exam season. Yeah, it is exam season. It is exam season and it's tough and it's going to be very hectic. And I don't have a lot of free time to myself, even when I get home. I have a whole pile of anime to watch and I just keep turning on my Chinese drama. <laughs> 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 I'm exploring another culture for a while. I was in Japan right now. <laughs> Honestly, good for you. Yeah, I, I found a whole bunch of them on Netflix, and I'm just like, okay, let's try this out. There's also a Turkish show I'm looking at watching on there. So, according to my English English teacher, I'm so sorry. Uh, Turkish dramas are like insane. Really? Like they follow a formula, but like they really blow things out of proportion. It's kind of like the Indian dramas. Okay, I love like, Bollywood. Yeah, it's kind of like that a little bit, but like a little bit less uh, crazy in terms of editing, but like the characters, the way they act are usually kind of blown out of proportion. That's what I've been told, at least. Well, let's just say I have discovered about myself in the last couple of years, I adore melodrama, overacting, <laughs> oh, no. and all this stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Although, I will say, I think a portion, there's a lot of melodrama in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, there is. So, oh, I'm sorry. There I is. think most anime fans might not admit it, but they're fans of melodrama. Because yeah. that, that's what makes, I think, part, anime part of anime. is Because the, they're just so overreactive yeah, to everything. everything. Like, I'm sorry, if Dragon Ball is not melodrama, I don't know what is. Like how low and wrong, <laughs> he could have been more smart about it, but his first thought after seeing his sister get taken away was probably a common a common occurrence. He goes and joins a military academy. He's like, I'm going to become a military officer and take over the world. I'm going to kill everyone <laughs> in my path. When he's having the pre-war meeting, he's like, I'm going to kill every single one of those rebels. And his soldiers are like, um, all right, <laughs> let's go, go off, <laughs> go off, let's go. It's just so. he was born with murder on the brain. Yeah. Well, um, well, I'm glad you all could join Zoe and I today as we talked about Legend of Galactic Heroes. Um, check it out if you feel like it. I will say it is not a show for everyone, obviously. But I, I think there's some go- little bits in there that people might enjoy. And if you like it, there's two more seasons. So enjoy that. If you have any thoughts or comments about the series we talked about today, you can reach me at the email address in the show notes. And if you have any shows to recommend to us, feel free to do so. Um, Hopefully, I will get around to those eventually. There's just so much anime out there. And, of course, with the coming of summer, there's lots of time to watch a ton of anime. So, enjoy. Again, thanks, Zoe, for joining me. and Happy to be here. <laughs> yep, and thank you for watching a series that um, you, as you so eloquently said, was boring. <laughs> oh, I, I will, I've said it before. Uh, my mom watched the last few episodes with me, and we were both yelling at the TV to get on with it. That sounds like me watching an opera. <laughs> anyway, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>